So ch ch changes. What we're about to change is looking at our idea of our z score and ch changing it to a percentile or a probability. So as we look at the objectives of this video, is that we are going to be using the table and technology to find the proportion of a z score um, in a specific interval and um, a z-score to find the p-tile from uh, the p-tile in a standard normal distribution. So, let's get it started. Ch-ch-changing! Let's res um, remind ourselves of the notes that we took today. I'll make it quick. When it comes to this particular situation, there's what's called a standard normal. So we have a normal distribution, but more specifically, when it is referred to as a standard normal, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is one. Because just like with the SAT scores and the ACT scores, when we standardized it, we had to standardize it to make the mean equal to zero. You know um, that this, whatever the mean score is for a particular college for acceptance um, for you, um, SAT scores, let's say, might be 1,200. Well, it's not 1,200. Um, well, how, I should say, is the mean equal to zero an acceptable entry-level score for whatever college you're looking for? The bottom line is it's not. It's not. It was standardized. So if we equate that to what we're talking about here, we a standard normal distribution is when we have the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Here's the standard normal um, notation. Remember, n represents normal. There's your mean, then there's your standard deviation. Here, remember, we have the Greek, so whenever we have the Greek, this is for the enti entire population, the mean and the standard deviation. Then the next thing we need to look at is our table. So we need to see how do we read a table. So here's a little mini table that we have um, from a previous problem. And as we look at this, remember that this first um, column right here represents the first digits of the z-score. And here, this represents the um, hundreds place of the z-score. If you look at your yellow piece of paper, remember the numbers aren't just as simple from 0 to um, um, 0.6 that yes, you can see all the digits that range specifically from 0 to 3.4. And also remember, since we are talking about all positive values, as we look at our bell curve and our mean is right there where my fingernail is, okay, all of the numbers inside of this body is more than 50%. Because remember, as I just take an invisible line of symmetry and go here, here's your 50% mark. Here's your other 50% mark. So anything that's going to be to the right of my fingernail has got to be greater than 50%. And this right here is what this table represents. So when I look at this right here, I'm just going to find, and again, this is rerun, we're going to find where Z is less than, and let's go with 1.7. Now the reality is whenever I'm doing this, I'm looking at the probability when Z is equal or Z is less than 1.7. I draw a bell curve. I always find my mean. 1.7 is going to be about here. Is it off? Absolutely. I said less than. So here is the area under the curve right here. And please remember, your table reads from the left tail over. So your table reads from the left all the way over. So what I need to do is, uh, I've got to change this. I've got to change this to a number that we can see here. So, oopsie, I'm going to change that to point five seven. So we can use this little table here. And then we'll expand. So 
Here I see 0.57 is going to go in this direction. And then here, my point, got to change the number again, don't I? Uh, let me change it to 0.53. So I'm going to go over, then I'm going to go down. And here, that is our probability. So let me write this a little clearer. And I don't feel like doing this video over again. So it is what it is. So the Z is going to be less than 0.53. We go over in this direction. We go down in that direction. And we find where it is in common, where it meets, which in this case is 0.7019. So this here is the probability under the curve. Now, I want to go just check over some other problems, and now let's use our, or our yellow table. Okay, so let's look at this problem really quickly. Okay, I'm on page 10 of your notes. So here, I want the probability of Z being less than 2.85. So I'm marking on my bell curve, you can see the 0 and the 2.85. Okay, I want it less than, so you can see that the area is shaded. Where did this come from? I'm going down to 2.8, and then I'm coming, um, going, so from 2.8, I'm going over. From 0 0.05, I'm going across. So as I look at this here, So like I said, I'm going to go to 2.8, which is here. I'm going to go over until I come down to 0.85, and then I have here. So that's where that 0.9978 um, comes from. Okay, so now let's look at this one. This one I want greater than um, 2.85. So it stands to reason that if the area under the curve is 1, and from the left tail to that point is 0 0.9978, this has got to be 1 minus 0 0.9978, which is 0 0.0022. Okay, now for this one, here I'm marking the 0, I'm marking the 1, I'm marking the 2, the negative 1 and the negative 2. If your thoughts are that we have to mark these, Ms. Sharbro, no, I just kind of noticed there was a negative sign there. So a negative um, 1.66, we have that. Then I'm going to shade here because I'm looking at greater than. So I'm shading all of this. And then when I find it on the um, table, so as you look at the table, we're looking for a negative 1.66. Notice, not a negative. Flip the page. Now, we'll go down to the negative 0.66. And then here, I'm going to go over, 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 over. If you're wondering why that looks so neat, I bet it's stylus. Okay, going down, going over to get that answer of 0 0.0485. But here's the problem. I didn't know this was taping. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here, as I'm looking at this, I need between a negative 1.66 and a positive 2.85 per what it says right here. So what I need to do is take, find the value of 
um, the z-score when it's less than 2.85, which is what I've done here. Then I need to find the z-score when it's less than a negative 1.66, which is what I've done here. And what do you do from there? Yep, you're right. Subtract the large from the small. And my final answer is what I have right here. So now I want you to do problem, um, the next problem says um, table A practice. I want you to go ahead and find that all by yourself. Okay, so this is the region I'm looking for. I find that to be 0.9505. And then the other one. And now you find the, the value here. The Z being a negative 1.33 and you subtract it to find the colored region that I'm looking for right here which is in this area right here. Now that was a pain in the gluteus maximus having to do all that work and now our calculator is going to do the work for us. So get a post-it note, slap it on here somewhere so we can see how this stuff is done in the calculator. What we are in the calculator, we're looking for normal CDF. You saw, you saw that I wrote it down somewhere else, but where is it exactly? Okay, so you're going to go to second, VARS. And then the first thing you're going to see is you're going to go down to 2 because 2 is normal CDF. We're always doing the CDF. We're not using the PDF ever, ever, ever. What this stands for is normal cumulative um, distribution function. So this is the one we use all the time. Now, this is what we enter into the calculator. Left bound. Right bound. The mean and then the standard deviation. Okay, so remember LB is left bound, RB is right bound, here's your mean and here's your standard deviation. You need to make note of that. Now your questions might be, well, exactly what is a left bound and a right bound? Well, here is I just graphed just a basic curve, and yes, here is zero, and I put something here and here, and I'm trying to find the area under here. This is your left bound. And this is your right bound. And the next question, well, and we're going to do this problem. Let's see how easy this particular problem is that we just did. Okay, so let me move the post-it out of the way. Let me slide this over. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to go second bars, go down to normal CDF, press enter. Now this is an 83, 84, oh my gosh, do you see how easy that is for the 84? When you press enter, this is what pops up. So now, and you're going to put down the value for your left bound and then your right bound, your mean is 0 and your standard deviation is 1. So let's talk about the 83 first. The 83, you're going to be put it in your, your left bound, negative 1.33, comma. Find your comma is right, uh, right above the number 7. Your um, right bound, 1.65, comma. Your mean, which is 0, and your comma, and your standard deviation, which is 1. And look at your answer. And for the other calculator, you're going to be doing the exact same thing, except that should be a 3, 3, shouldn't it? And then I'm going to be putting in a 1.65, and this already is your default. And here's my, here it pastes the solution, pastes the equation, and there is my answer. Casio's, as always, Google it. Oh, and just in case you didn't compare the answers, check it out, people, check it out. Now, as I continue to do this, the next one I'm going to do with the 83, and 
then I'll be doing it with 84 side by side. So let's do, let's back up and do problem number um, C at the top of this page, or problem letter C at the top of the page. Okay, recognize here is your graph. So let's just write down normal CDF. Your left bound is a negative 1.66. Your right bound never ends, so it is a positive infinity. Your mean is zero, and your standard deviation is one. And I know your next thought is, yeah, 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 bro, how do I put a negative, inf a positive infinity or any type of infinity in the calculator? Okay, so first of all, how do I know it's a positive infinity? Your graph shows you that. I also know because it's talking about greater than. Greater than never ends. Okay, so as I look at the 83, as I clear everything, so second vars down to normal CDF, left bound, a negative 1.66, comma, right bound. Now, you can find the positive infinity on this, but I do this the lazy way. I just put in an extreme number. Okay, so I just press the number 1 until I feel like it. Okay, because that's an extremely high number. Okay, then I put in the mean and the standard deviation. Look what you get. And for those of you who have 84s, you can see how much easier it is for you. Well, actually, now you're just kind of stuck because we already changed the calibration. You're bound negative 1.66, enter, 11111, a large number. Enter, you've got your mean and your standard deviation already, and it pasted onto the desktop, and there is our answer. Now, your thought should be okay, Ms. Yarba, we did it when it was bounded, we did it when it was unbounded in the positive area. What about when it's unbounded in the negative? So, go back to page 10 of your notes, and here, let's look at this graph. Now, I've already started writing it down over here. If we go normal CDF, we're talking about a negative infinity. That's your left bound. Here is your right bound. And yes, you're going to be putting in your mean of zero and your standard deviation of one. Okay, so put them in the calculators. I'll have your answer shortly. And um, the thought is for the negative infinity, let me just go ahead and do this. Um, you need to put in an extremely low negative number. So regardless of which calculator you're using, you're going to go to, um, going to, go to um, second VARS, go to normal CDF. Okay, your left bound is an extremely low number, negative. Oh, I didn't mention this before, but you're pressing the negative sign, which is under the 3, not the subtraction sign. So 1111, comma, what is my right bound, it was a 2.85, comma, your mean, comma, your standard deviation. And for this calculator, second VARS, down to normal CDF, here a, a negative 11111, really low, enter, enter in the value of 2.85 for the upper bound, mean, standard deviation, brought to the desktop, bam. And as you look at your answers, notice they're exactly the same. Okay, so that ends the video notes. And um, you're going to have to play this over and over again, some of you guys, to understand the bounding. And I'll say it again. Yes, I can, I can put in the calculator um, 1E to the 99, but nobody's got time for that. I don't even know where that button is. Yeah, I actually do. But no one has time to find it. So just put in an extreme high number or extreme low number. Why did I choose the one? Because I felt like it. I just kept pressing it until I was done. A couple seconds. So have a good one. Bye-bye.